Well, howdy everyone, and a very happy Easter to all of you. I'm speaking from my office right now, as we're in the middle of a lockdown here in the UK, and it's probably the same situation wherever you are right now too. I hope you're staying at home and practicing your macro photography, uh, which is just about the only thing you can do right now. Remember, for the first time in history, we can save the human race just by lying in front of the TV and doing nothing. Let's not mess this up, people. It'll be interesting to see how strong all those anti-vaccine believers' convictions are when a vaccine for coronavirus finally comes out. Well, I don't think I've caught the coronavirus myself, well not yet, uh, but I probably don't look so hot right now as I have a vicious recurring tooth infection, so I'm all jimmied up on antibiotics and painkillers and of course I've got my coronavirus hair, which hasn't been cut in a long time. I've been fairly busy recently, but I've just about got enough energy left for a quick Easter message for all of you, my wonderful subscribers. So if anything related to God or Easter is beyond your tolerance level, then I'm warning you, move along now. The channel's called Christopher Frost Photography. 99% of my videos are about photography, so occasionally you get Christopher Frost, I'm afraid. If you don't want that, don't worry, I won't be insulted at all. Now. I'm very open about the fact that my day job is to lead a number of small churches here in beautiful Wales and here are some pictures of the area where I live, uh, which you might recognise from some of my videos. It's been a very strange to be here in the middle of, of the UK coronavirus lockdown because we've been asked to nationally close our church doors, which last happened about 800 years ago during the time of King John because he got excommunicated. It's got me thinking a lot about how we can handle such difficult and strange situations we find ourselves in today with a bit of help from God. Earlier this year, just before this pandemic arrived, I'd been reading up on the fascinating history of the early church and how it managed to grow so quickly and powerfully in its first 300 years, despite being mostly illegal and often persecuted by the Roman authorities. And what really caught my attention was that one of the reasons for that growth was that, during the severe epidemics that would sometimes hit the Roman Empire, Christians seem to set themselves apart from people of any other faith of the time by their response to the medical emergency around them, and the Christian movement even seemed to grow as a result. The idea of that really captivated and deeply challenged me in my own faith, so let me explain a bit more. It obviously seems pretty relevant today, if you ask me. In the years 180 AD and 251 AD, two major epidemics swept through the entire Roman Empire, far worse than anything we are going through with the coronavirus. Historians think it might have been hit by smallpox and then measles, although we can't say for sure. The ancient Romans understood human anatomy fairly well, but they didn't know that germs existed, and so they couldn't treat communicable disease and they certainly had no access to vaccines, antibiotics or even any of the modern painkillers that we, we can use today. And generally speaking, ancient Roman cities were appallingly overcrowded, crime-ridden, unhygienic cesspools of dirt, noise, disease and moral depravity. The only reason people lived in them at all was because the cities were the only place any kind of real economic opportunity could be found by anyone. So this witch's brew of contributing factors swept those epidemics through the entire known world and they carried grave mortality rates with them. Some historians suggest that a tenth of the world's population were killed at the time, but a broader consensus seems to be more that actually about a quarter of the population succumbed, perhaps even more. And there are some painful historical stories about what life was like during these events, particularly from the time of the plague in the second century. The mostly pagan population of the time had no way of understanding the evil of the, ac of the <laughs> academic, the pandemic around them. Doctors were stumped. Philosophers had no answers that could offer any kind of hope or meaning to the chaos around them. Pagan priests in their, their lavish temples couldn't imagine why those mythical gods they worshipped would have sent such a curse, or, or if they were even involved, or if they even cared. 
the pagan population had no hope for what would happen to their souls if they died, because Greco-Roman belief said precious little about the afterlife, except that it was probably just about as bad as this one. The population of people who believed in the pagan gods of the time knew only one thing, that if a friend or family member got sick, then they needed to get away from them as soon as possible and just abandon them to their fate. And they did. The world became a horrible cesspit of abandonment and loneliness as people fled to the countryside and deserted their loved ones to die the moment any kind of sickness came over them. The forlorn victims left behind would sometimes perish just from thirst or hunger before any disease could overcome them in their weakened state. However, the Christian response was astonishingly different and well documented. It was something no one had seen before. Christians in their small minority communities broke the mold by largely deciding to stay behind and care for those who were sick. Their understanding of God through the teachings of Jesus Christ showed them that there is one God who loves humble people who have selfless servant hearts. And that was a totally new belief in ancient society. Jesus had taught his followers that, that whatever we do, even for the least of our brothers and sisters, that we do unto God himself. And in being willing to die for us for our sins on the cross, he'd shown his followers the ultimate example that truly loving someone can potentially take sacrifice, or at the very least putting yourself at risk as well as having the power of radically loving hearts. Also, the Christians didn't have the same fear of death that pagans had. The Christian faith had taught them that our time in this world, with all its pain and sorrow, is simply a drop in the ocean of eternity, and that for those who truly believe in Jesus and turn away from their sins anything they're doing wrong, death is only a passage to a better place with the God who made them and loves them, and with believing friends and family members who have gone before. It's on Easter Sunday that Jesus' followers first discovered that, for those who put their faith in God, death really is not the end. It was proven to them by their witnessing of Jesus Christ alive again among them, even after being killed beyond any shadow of a doubt on a painful cross by the Roman army. In the middle of the chaos of the second plague in 251 AD, Bishop Cyprian wrote from Carthage, by contempt of death, Christians prepare for a crown of life. Our brothers who have been freed from the world by the summons of the Lord should not be mourned, since we know that they are not lost, but sent before, that in departing they lead the way, that as travelers, as voyagers are wont to be, they should be longed for, but not lamented. Some of those Christians who stayed behind to care for others did indeed catch the illnesses and, and pass away, bravely facing death. But the overall survival rates within Christian communities were far better than in others, because modern medical science teaches us that, in most epidemics, your chances of survival shoot upwards if you have access to only the most basic of nursing. Even without medication, when you're severely weakened, just having someone to tend your wounds, feed you and bring you fresh water can increase your odds of survival by a half or even two thirds. So the Christians who remained made a huge difference to those who were in need. Some pagans owed their very lives to the kindness and bravery of Christians who had stayed behind for them. It made a huge impression on those who came back into the cities when the plagues had, had finally died down. The Christians' higher survival rates, their courage in the face of death, and their seemingly unstoppable love for their neighbours, whoever they might be, all served as fuel for the growth of the early church and served to revitalize and redress the entire moral compass of Roman society. And that challenges me so deeply. Am I doing the same kind of thing? Am I marking myself out to those around me in the same transformational way as those Christian brothers and sisters who've gone before me by my bravery and my behavior? Faith 
courage and selflessness go a long way because people see it, they see it. If Christians want to know how they can mark themselves out in our society in the middle of a pandemic crisis, then that is what we need. The faith to make the decision every day to believe in God and his goodness, even when things are happening that we don't fully understand. And the courage in the face of adversity and the selfless, boundless love of Jesus Christ. Now, that might seem impossible. And by ourselves, it, it kind of is. But if you're watching this today and you are a Christian, then I have more good news for you. The Spirit of God himself is living within you right now. The same Spirit who gave Jesus all the courage and love and generosity and power to do everything he did. The same Spirit who rose him from the dead this Easter Sunday. So draw from the powerful Holy Spirit every day. Pray that he would fill you afresh so that you can experience in the love of God in you and love those people around you just as powerfully. And if you're watching this and, and you're not sure if you're a Christian yet, you're not sure what you believe or if you quite want to take a step of faith, I just want to encourage you to discover more, to seek so that you can Find a good church to belong to, one that's exciting and full of life. Read the Bible. Start with the Gospel of John. I'll give you a hint. The word that he's talking about at the beginning is Jesus. Talk to a Christian friend or read a book by someone who's asked the same questions you might have yourself. A great place to start is this brilliant book, The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel, a famous investigative reporter who was once an atheist but decided to search for real answers to his questions about God and was truly surprised by what he discovered. During this coronavirus lockdown, Christians are trying to find new ways to celebrate and live out what we firmly believe, that Jesus Christ is our loving Lord and God, that he died on a cross to pay the price for our sins, that he returned from the dead on Easter Sunday to affirm everything he was and did and that those who believe in him can receive a new life with God today and even eternal life after death. It was only at the age of, of 21 that I became a Christian myself and I could finally say that I believe all that too, although that's a story for another day. But since making that decision, God has become more and more real to me every day and I've never looked back. So God bless you this Easter, stay safe, Stay well, stay at home, and seek God, no matter how close or far away from him you might feel like you are, because he is right there for you, right now.